Hello friends, welcome to Astro Crescent. I've been posting uh, videos on YouTube for the last five or six months, but all of them have subtitles. Today, I decided to make a video with myself in it and minimum subtitles. Today, in this video, I'm going to review my ASI 533MC Pro one shot color camera which sits here on my imaging train on my telescope William Optics GT71 I've been using this camera ever since I purchased this telescope and uh, today I'll share some details about this and also share some of the work I have done using this camera so stay tuned, uh, I'll show in the end some of the images that I've taken with this camera. My telescope usually lies here and it will stay most of the time in winter. But let's head over to my computer and uh, uh, get some details of the work I have done with this camera. After watching some YouTube videos, I had three cooled color cameras in mind. The ZWO 294MC Pro, 533MC Pro and 183MC Pro. My main concern was uh, good quality but low cost. Uh, let's take a look at the price difference. Uh, these cameras are on sale right now but at that time 294MC Pro was $999, about $1000. ASI 533MC Pro was $200 less like $899 and ASI 183MC Pro was $799, again $200 less. Right, so $1000 plus tax, you know, these are US dollars, Canadian dollars are different, and we also pay 13% HST on top of this price. So price was really, really a main concern for me. I decided to go with 533MC Pro. This camera got good reviews everywhere. Of course, it has a square sensor, one inch square sensor, but it is 14-bit camera with 50,000 E full well capacity and very low read noise as compared to 183MC Pro. Now you can see here, 183MC Pro has 1.6 to 7E read noise while 533MC Pro has only one. Both 294MC Pro and 183MC Pro, they have a rectangular 4x3 sensor. Both have amp glow problem, which of course can be remedied or can be taken care of by using calibration frames. The 533MC Pro, it did not have any amp glow problem. So let's see what is Amp Glow. ZWO on its website for the MC533 Pro camera shows Amp Glow like this. Amp Glow 300 second exposure on this right side and for MC533 no Amp Glow at all. Dark current is very very low at uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius temperature the Amp Glow is extremely extremely low and I usually uh, keep my camera temperature as at minus 20 degrees Celsius. The camera body, cover for the camera 
M42 to M48 adapter, T2 1.25 inch adapter, 1.25 inch nose piece, T2 M48 extender 16.5 mm, 121 mm T2 extender, 4 spacers, 2 half meter USB 2 cables and 1 2 meter USB 3 cable and a quick start guide. The best thing is it these cameras come with a very nice camera bag which you can uh, use to store the camera when it is not in use. Cooled color cameras, all of them have standard 55 millimeter back focus. I'll talk about uh, setting this 55 millimeter standard back focus on my William Optics GT71 telescope in a separate video. This is a single dark frame of 60 seconds at uh, 101 gain. I don't see any amp glow in this. This is 120 second single dark frame and here is 180 seconds dark frame. Again no amp glow. This is a master dark a stack of 20 dark frames 120 seconds each as you can see it's nice it's clear clean no m glow at all so let's put them away let's go to some uh, let's go to master flat frame so this is a master flat comprising of uh, 50 flat frames at 0 0.5 second each very nice very clean the gain of the camera is uh, 101 and the temperature was I think it was minus 20 degrees very nice the very first imaging session I had with this camera and William Optics GT71 telescope was the Bode's Galaxies M81 on the left side and M82, the Cigar Galaxy on the right side. This is a stack of, just stacked image, no processing yet. This is a stack of uh, about 7 hours of data at minus 20 degree. The finished image was this. This was my very first project, my very first video on YouTube and it got a good response. The next one was the Pinwheel Galaxy. This is a stack of about 3 hours of data taken with the Celestron C8 SCT telescope using the Elpro filter. After processing the image turned out to be extremely nice. Uh, one thing I have to mention that I have very limited processing skills at that time especially. I did not know anything about Pixinsight. I was just learning. So the next one I have to show here is the Veil Nebula. This is a stack of about 8 hours and 45 minutes of data which I collected over two nights using the William Optics GT71 telescope and Optolong L-Extreme filter. The images were stacked in a deep sky stacker. And here is the finished image, the final image. I was very happy with this. For a beginner like me, that's not a bad image. The next one I would like to show you, Elephant's Trunk Nebula. I don't remember how much data it was 
to after processing and SHO image in Pixinsight, this was the final image. And you can see the details. Uh, I would like to mention that most of the images were square when they were stacked, uh, but I later cropped them to fit the screen. And here is stack of about 12 hours of data which I collected over two nights of the hard nebula IC1805 using the William Optics GT71 telescope and LX Steam filter. This image was stacked in Pixinsight using the weighted batch pre-processing script. After SHO processing in Pixinsight, this was the final image. Very nice, good details and I was very happy with this. Let's put this away and move on to another one. The Pickering Nebula. This was one of my the best images I would say. Again with the limited processing skills, post processing skills, I was very 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 happy with this image. This was one hour stack of the Tulip Nebula. This is live stack of the Crescent Nebula. You can see the details. And here is my latest live stack for about two hours of data of the Andromeda Galaxy. I also posted a video of this live stacking on YouTube. Earlier I did live stack of the Eagle Nebula. Again this image is heavily cropped because this nebula is too small for the uh, wide field field of view of the William Optics GT71 telescope. But as you can see the camera and the telescope the combination gave me very good results. You can clearly see the pillars of creation over here. It's not perfect, but for a beginner, it's not, it's not bad. I would say very nice. I have taken you know, a few shots of the moon also, but I don't think this uh, telescope GT71 is you know, perfect for, for taking images of the planets and you know, most of the galaxies. So that's it for today. Uh, I'm very happy with the performance of this camera. If tomorrow I decide to switch to monochrome or upgrade to monochrome and I'm looking for a low cost solution, low cost monochrome camera, then the monochrome version of this camera, ESI 533mm Pro will be my first preference. Thanks for watching.